Hey guys, what's going on? It's Tony from Lomo Paintball. I'm here at our brand new X-Ball field here in Lenox Township, Michigan. And today I'm bringing you a quick walkthrough of the Atlantic City 2018 layout for the NXL. Boom, and we're back. Guys, first thing I'm gonna notice here, you've got this giant brick on this layout. I mean, if you wanted to, you'd have three people behind this, but I wouldn't do that. So guys, we're gonna kinda walk up, as you can see out towards the snake side, there is a giant lane coming off the start box into this brick for the snake. You have an option to shoot gap on the left, and also the gap on the right, which is a little bit smaller. Now we're gonna continue on towards the snake side, because in my opinion, this is going to be the strongest side of the field. You're looking like, why are Doritos on the snake side? I don't know, that's a really good question. You got one, you got two, you got three. You've got four Doritos on the snake side of the field. So that'll tell you right away, guys, this is not a traditional style layout. They definitely switch it up through a wrench into the plans. So we'll continue on this way. So you come all the way out to the corner here. And this is going to be, in my opinion, once again, I'm not a professional player, but I've played enough layouts. This is going to be a key bunker in stopping your snake push down this side of the field, in which the snake side is a strong side of the field once again. So once you reach this bunker, you would probably want a player to continuously shoot down this lane unless something is drastically happening on the other side of the field. But this guy will stop the snake push. Onward down the snake. So you've got a Dorito here, which a lot of the teams will call the God Bunker. God bunkers normally key. Uh, check out our other video, shameless plug, on bunker names, bunker calls. Normally the bunker before the snake is always called the God bunker, something like that. This bunker is an all right position, but that back corner that we were just at can really stop the snake push. Onward down the snake. Right here from S1, you can see across the field, you see a tall tower. A lot of people are gonna play that bunker because it's a bigger bunker and a lot of people think they can survive from there. This player gets into S1, nighty night. I don't think you're going to be there long. On to the S2. Get into the S2. It's all right. You got some cross field shots here. If someone tries to go up to the middle to this big wedge, definitely going to shoot him out. And onward to the back left and the other bunker over there, that small Maya Temple. This is where it really gets tricky. If this player doesn't have anybody down in this corner and he can scoot around this S2 into S3, pretty much almost game over at this point. The snake is super strong on this layout, guys. Once you get into this S3 bunker, I mean, you've got numerous cross field shots. You can shoot back at the big brick, which almost always somebody's gonna be there. You're shooting the corner, you're shooting the other Maya. I mean, you've got endless supply of uh, people to shoot once you get into S3. We can continue on down this way. Obviously, if you're at this point, if you're at this point in time getting into the S4 per se, the game's probably already over anyways. Once you get into here, you could even play the tip of this, looking inward to finish the game off, shooting at the brick, shooting the Dorito, if there's even anybody left at this point in time. So let's uh, continue, we'll walk around the back and then go over to the Dorito side and see what we find out. So like I said, while we're walking over there, I find this very interesting that they've got four Doritos on the snake side of the field. Like what, who does that? Apparently the NXL. All right, guys, so coming from this side, we'll walk up to the big brick. And as you notice, looking over this way, I really don't have much. Off the box, you come in, you're trying to shoot, but you really don't have much unless you come over the top real quick of this. Literally shooting over the top, but you can't do that long or else it's not gonna end up well for you. A lot of guys will come up, shoot maybe one or two seconds over the top and call it a day. But from here, personally, I would not play this. I'm gonna walk out here towards this can. So if you were coming off the starting box, coming off here, you can shoot cross field very, very well. If you guys notice from this can, look at an S1 lane. This guy can come off the box cross field shooting and shoot directly through that S1 lane or even through the giant wedge at the center of the field at that other Dorito lane. So you've got two lanes coming off, going into this can out towards the corner. Bad boy needs to be inflated a little bit more. 
This guy can definitely help stop a Dorito side push, but to be completely honest, I would, not saying that I <laughs> wouldn't focus on the Dorito side of the field at all, but the snake side is super important on this layout in my opinion. There's always uh, more than one way to get a job done, but snake side on this Atlantic City layout in 2018, it's pretty much gonna rule this. Going on to this tall tower, which I said earlier, this guy can have really good battles with that snake one over there. He can ultimately stop him from getting into the snake two by the gap. If this guy in this tall temple literally just lane paint and kept dumping paint in between the gap from S1 to S2, he could stop that player from advancing up the field. Onward down the Dorito side. I'm gonna skip talking about this bunker. Uh, it's not really my favorite. I'm gonna move on to this one. This guy in this, in this uh, wedge that's laying down has a lot of responsibility if he can get up here. He's got a lot of good shots across the field. He can shoot a lot of big gaps in lanes and stop people from moving. But unfortunately, he's got to get up here and this is near the 50 yard line of the field. He's got to get all the way here first to be able to do that stopping. So that's why in my opinion, that snake side of the field is going to push harder and faster. Dorito side is going to play slower. Ultimately, if you're looking to get in S2 and S3 on the snake side, if you can get into this uh, laid down wedge on the Dorito side of this layout, I would highly recommend that. So guys, now I'm standing here in the middle of the field. I kind of didn't really want to put much time into the middle of the field effort uh, because for me walking this, there's a lot of bunkers that you can get pinched in. If you get up in here and then it's a nice big bunker, but if this guy's over here in the snake, that would be your snake two, snake two, you're pinched. You got a guy far up on the Drito side, you're pinched. A lot of these center bunkers, guys, in my opinion, let's even go up to this can. Where do you really want to go from here? What is your, what's your big move from this position? I really didn't see much. Not saying that teams won't play it, not saying that it's not important. You can practice a layout for so long and so long and figure things out, but for my first initial walk, this center wasn't as important as to really getting out on the snake side stopping that snake push and then definitely if you're going to get up on the Dorito side hitting that uh, wedge near the 50 that's laying down once again this is just my opinion you can flame me if you'd like but this is my walk of the Atlantic City layout 2018 NXL thanks for watching guys give the video a like don't forget to go to lonewallpaintball.com for some good merch and we will see you guys later and come out to the Lennox Township field because check it out um, we got a ton of new scenario fields too